this week. I hope you had a great week. As we get ready for worship, there's just a few things that I want to let you know about that are going to be important to your lives. First, if you're on YouTube, make sure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you're on Facebook, make sure you like our page and share this video. I want to thank you for being so generous during these difficult times. We try to give you several options to make giving easy and simple. First, you can go to nlccfamily.com and use our online secure giving option. And second, you can text any amount to the number below. We also want to make sure that we connect with you. So while you're at nlccfamily.com, make sure you fix, fill out a digital connect card and subscribe for our newsletter. And while you're on YouTube and Facebook, make sure that you jump into the conversations below. Also check out Right Now Media. There's thousands of videos and Bible studies that can be applicable to your life, accessible right now. Thanks again for joining us today. Let's get ready to worship. Well, good morning, church. Stay with us at home. We're going to praise the King of Kings in this place. And we just want you to come together with us to worship. He is on his throne. He is victorious. Let's celebrate together. Amen. Where I go, you go. You never leave me when I'm lost. There's always hope. Every high and every low, you're standing next to me in the fight. There's always hope. I lift my eyes, let my heart cry out to a lie, a lie. With an anthem we raise up, our voice proclaim you're alive, alive. Your love keeps chasing me. It always will, it always will Your grace keeps changing me And it always will, it always will oh, oh, oh. In my joy, in my pain You're right beside me In your arms, there's always hope Yeah. 
worship you in this place. There is no other. Hallelujah. Come, Father. As our hearts sing out and to sing your praises, we lift our hands wherever we are watching this and singing along, knowing that it's where you are that matters, God. It's you living in our hearts, Lord. It's not, it's not the building, it's not the place, but it's your church coming together to sing, to worship, to clap our hands, to declare your victory, Lord. And that's what we're going to do, Lord, as we continue to sing. We're going to sing about your glory that reigns on high. We're going to sing about your strength and your power that never ends. And you, Lord, are on your throne. And we worship you. Worship you. Your faithfulness, your faithfulness. 
service we look to you the answer to all our problems you are God amen hey good morning church hope you're doing well hey let me ask you a question have you ever been amazed before now while you're thinking about your answer or maybe just reflecting over your life let me remind you of what the word amazing means it has a couple different meanings it means surprise or wonder. It means that something is unbelievable, something is fascinating, or something is incredible. So have you ever been amazed before? And as I was thinking about my life, I, I thought about when I saw my daughter for the first time. Now, she hadn't been born yet. We had actually gone to see if it was going to be a, a boy or a girl. So we went to the doctor and they were doing an ultrasound. And uh, again, at the time, we didn't know Lila was Lila. So the, the doctor was trying to figure out her gender. She wasn't cooperating. And so I remember kind of leaning down to Lisa's belly, and I just began to talk. And I said, hey, it's Dad. Dad's here. Why are you being stubborn? Why, why aren't you cooperating? And I'll never forget this. On the ultrasound screen, as I began to talk, to Lila, she turned to me. She turned to the direction of my voice. And then if you know my daughter, this is kind of comical, she began to move her mouth. So even before she was born, she was trying to communicate and trying to talk with us. But that was an incredible moment. And I'll never forget the, the day that I got to see her face to face. And as they were cleaning her up in the hospital, I walked over to her and I, I put my finger down by her little hand and she grabbed my finger. And at that moment, my, my heart was smitten. I, I was just, I was putty. But that was an amazing moment. Maybe you're thinking about the birth of your child or your children. Some of you are sports fans. Maybe you're thinking about an incredible win that your team pulled out. For some of you, maybe it was the Minneapolis miracle that happened a few years ago. Or for me, it was the immaculate reception with the Pittsburgh Steelers and Oakland Raiders. You know, sports has a way of fascinating us, doesn't it? 
Maybe it was somewhere where you were on vacation and you saw a sunset that was breathtaking. You, you just couldn't put it into words. Maybe you saw the majestic mountains and you were just in awe and you were inspired. I remember for us, we went to the Bahamas on vacation and it was that crystal clear blue water, water that I had never seen before. And if you know me, you know I don't like to go into the ocean, but I was kind of drawn to it because it was incredible. It, it was amazing. And can I just tell you that it's, it's one thing for us to be amazed by the world's beauty. It's one thing for us to be amazed by the incredible people that are a part of our life. And it's another thing for us to just be amazed at the unique opportunities that come our way. But can I tell you, there's something completely different though about being amazed by God. So wherever you are right now, let me just ask you this. How amazing is God? Just think about that for a minute. God is incredible, isn't he? He's fascinating. He's unbelievable. He's full of surprise. He's full of wonder. God is amazing. You know, the scripture says this, that God is strong and mighty. He, he's high and above any ruler. I mean, he, he's in a place all by himself, right? God is our shepherd. He is our provider and our healer. Scripture says that he is our righteousness, that he's merciful. Are you thankful for the mercy and grace of God this morning? Scripture also says that God is peace, that he's love, that in God we find strength and comfort. The Bible also says that God leads us from victory to victory. He is our banner, isn't he? God is amazing. And so what we're going to do over the next couple weeks is, is use these weeks to talk about how amazing God is. We're starting a brand new series today that we're calling Amazed. And today what we're gonna actually talk about is how God's presence is amazing. Can I just tell you that? God's presence is amazing. And I want us to look at Psalm 46 this morning. So if you go ahead and grab your Bible, Psalm 46 verses four through seven is where we're gonna go today. And while you're finding your place there, let me just say that in this Psalm, the psalmist paints a beautiful picture, or could I say it this way, an amazing picture of God's presence. And I want you to see it this morning. Psalm 46, verse number four, it says this, there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her, she will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now, before we talk about what God's presence actually brings to our life, the, the psalmist tells us that God's presence is like a river that never runs dry. Think about that. God's presence keeps flowing and flowing and flowing. If you're like me, you might think about the Energizer Bunny. It just keeps going and going and going. But God's presence, there's no end to his presence. Everywhere you go, God is there. He's omnipresent. So the psalmist wants us to understand that. But then more specifically though, the psalmist wants us to know this, that God is right where you are. Now, I don't know about you, but that's comforting. Because in the ups and downs of life, in the uncertainty of life, we all face struggle, we all face hardship, we all go through difficult times and difficult seasons. Think about this, no matter what you're facing today, no matter what your struggle is, God, if you've put your faith in him, is right there with you. So you're not in this alone. You're not in the struggle alone, you're not in the battle alone. God is with us, that's comforting. But then the psalmist says, hey, there's benefits to God's presence. That when you, when you actually connect with God, there's some things that God will do in your life that you can't find anywhere else. So think about this. God's presence first brings joy. Verse number four says this. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. God's presence makes us glad. Maybe another way of saying it is this. Is this. God's presence fills our life with joy. I'm so thankful for the joy of the Lord. Scripture says it's our strength, right? 
But how many of you know this is also true? When we take our eyes off of God, when, when we kind of disconnect from God, joy is the first thing that leaves us. And so just think about your life, maybe where you are right now. When joy leaves, we feel lonely. And can I just tell you that in our day and age today, people feel lonely. Mental health issues are on the rise. Suicide is on the rise. People are depressed. People are sad. People, their hearts are just heavy right now. They're, they're dealing with a lot of serious issues and serious concerns. And when joy leaves, we feel lonely. We feel like we have to go through the battle or the struggle all by ourselves. When joy leaves, we feel afraid and anxious. And again, some of us are there this morning. We're, we're afraid. We're worried. We don't know what the future has in store for us. And can I just remind you that when joy leaves, that's where fear comes into the picture. That, that's where anxiousness comes into our life. So what do we do? We need to connect with God because in his presence, there's joy. Did you know that in God's presence, he has a way of just filling our hearts with courage? And let me just remind you what courage is. Courage is knowing that God has your back. Life's hard and challenging, but when you know that God has your back, you can move forward. You can have confidence. You can have hope. And can I just tell you that, you know, I, I'm a person just like you. And just last week, I, I was praying and I was saying to God, you know, Lord, I need to know that you're with me. I need to know that, that this struggle I'm in right now, I'm not all alone. I, I need to know that you see me, that, that, that you're aware of what I'm going through. And what I love so much about God is he showed up. Just that week, I got two letters in the mail from people. And it blessed my heart. They just said, hey, pastor, we're thinking about you. We're praying for you. We love you. We want you to be encouraged. Somebody stopped by the office the other day and gave me a card. Said, we love you. We're praying for you. God's good. I, I have a friend who texts me every morning and says, I'm praying for you. And then says this, God's got your back. And, and wow, how that's blessed me. How that's encouraged me how that's just put wind in my sails and helped me to, to keep trusting God and move forward. But understand this, when, when joy leaves, we're afraid and we're anxious. And when joy leaves, we go looking for it. We go searching for it. That's why, that's why today people are, are going to the bottle. They're going to bars. They're drinking. They're binge watching episodes on, on TV, streaming things. They're looking for relationships. Why? Because when joy leaves, we go searching for it. We go looking for it. But here's what scripture says. That perfect love casts out all fear. You see, when we connect with God and when we spend time in his, his presence, the love of God, the love of Jesus just fills us with joy. Listen to scripture. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11 says this, you will show me the way of life, giving me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. What, what was the psalmist saying there? God's presence is amazing. God's presence fills our life with joy. Now here's the thing to remember though. Joy doesn't come from hoping that our circumstances will change or be different. Joy comes from knowing that God is always with us. Maybe you want to write this down. Just dwell on this, reflect on this throughout the day. But here's, here's a truth I think we need to just rely on. When God's character is greater than our crisis, we can have joy. See, we're going to go through hard times. We're going to go through difficult times. But when we take our eyes off of ourselves, when we take our eyes off of our problems, and we begin to look at God and connect with God, we can be joyful. E even though the road may be bumpy and it may not be straight, God is with us and that fills our heart and our life with joy. So God's presence brings joy. The psalmist also says that God's presence brings 
stability. Look at it with me, verse number 5. It's again talking about the city of God. So the psalmist is saying, what makes the city of God so amazing? Well, it's that his presence is there, right? The psalmist says this, God is within her, and here it is, she will not fall. It's talking about stability, talking about strength. And then it says this, God will help her at break of day. So God's presence brings stability to our life. And in case you're wondering, stability is actually the ability to persevere. It, it's the ability to keep moving forward when things are hard, when things are difficult. How many of you know that, that sometimes when it's night in our lives, figuratively, it seems like it lasts forever, doesn't it? And the psalmist alludes to this. He says, you can have joy knowing that God's with you, but understand this. He says, God will help at the break of day. He's talking about how, how sometimes the night seems long and the night seems difficult. But with God in your life, he gives you the strength to persevere. Now, we may not make this connection, but the Jews who read about God helping at the break of day, they would have thought about Moses leading the Israelites through the Red Sea. So would you go back with me in your memory to the book of Exodus? Just think about how Israel was rejoicing that they had been rescued from slavery in Egypt. And Moses is leading them out of, out of Egypt through the wilderness to the Red Sea. And when they came to the Red Sea, they couldn't cross it. So they just camped there for a while. And the Bible says that while they were camped at the Red Sea, Pharaoh gathered his army together and he chased after the Israelites because he wanted them to continue to serve the Egyptians as slaves. So here Israel is at, at the edge of the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army is coming in and closing in behind them. And the Bible says that Israel's terrified. And really what they started to do is they started to blame God. They said, Lord, weren't there enough graves in Egypt that we could have been buried there? Why did you have to bring us out here in the desert just to wipe us out? So they're calling out to God for help. And if you remember the story, God splits the Red Sea, separated the Red Sea so Israel could walk to the other side on dry ground. But here's the amazing thing. We, we lose sight of this sometimes. When did Israel cross the Red Sea? Well, it appears, as you, as you look through Scripture, it appears that Israel crossed the Red Sea at night. Because in Exodus chapter 14, verse 6, 27 listen to these words it says so as the sun began to rise now another translation says it this way at daybreak so israel crosses the red sea at night they get to the other side the egyptian army continues to pursue them and chase after them and here's what scripture says that moses raised his hand over the sea the water rushed back into its usual place the egyptians tried to escape but the Lord swept them into the sea. So you know what that tells me? Here it is. If we want to see the break of day, you have to endure the darkness of night. If you want to see the break of day, you have to endure storms. Now in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus tells us that it's his presence that helps us to persevere. It's his presence that gives us strength. Listen to these words of Jesus. Matthew 7 verse 25. It says this, though the rain comes in torrents and the flood waters rise and the winds beat against that house, it won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. When the rains and floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. And as I begin to reflect on that verse, I, I think Jesus wanted us to know a couple things. I think one of the things Jesus wanted us to know is this. Sometimes when it rains, it pours. You ever felt like that? And I think Jesus wanted us to know that as much as we try to prevent things from happening, we can't. And he also wanted us to know that sometimes things seem to come out of nowhere. And sometimes we're just blindsided by life. We're, we're just hit by life from every angle. And it can be overwhelming. It can be discouraging. But... Jesus says this, 
we can persevere because the Lord is with us and he promises to help us. So, so church, God's presence brings stability, brings strength to our life. And then lastly, the psalmist says this, that God's presence brings security. Look at verses 6 and 7. Scripture says, Nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall, he lifts his voice, the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us, the God of Jacob is our fortress. You know what that's saying? God fights for us. This struggle we're in, this battle that we're in, God fights for us. Think about how God is described. The Bible says that God's arm is strong enough to save us. That God is a strong tower that we can run to to find refuge and peace and safety. That God is able to care for us. He's able to meet every need we have in our life. The psalmist wants us to know that. But then he also leaves us with this thought. That God is in complete control. Can I just tell you that today? God is still on the throne. He, he's still King of kings and Lord of lords. And he is in control. And we need to be able to rest in that. And we need to be, be okay with God's will and God's plan. Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus said, Lord, your will be done. That's stability. That's security when we understand that our life is in God's hands. And not only is he going to finish the work he started in our life, He's going to finish the plan that he's put into place. Now, let, let me leave you with this thought today. My brother just bought a house, and while they were uh, moving and closing, you know how that goes, they were staying with my parents for a while. So just this past weekend, they were able to move into their brand new house. And, and you know how it is when you move over the weekend, you don't always get things lined up. So they didn't have water. So... The first thing they had to do was go to the store and they just bought gallons and gallons and gallons of water. Now they have a family of four and when you're trying to flush toilets and that kind of stuff, three gallons of water, uh, it just doesn't last very long. So their water's running low. It, hap it happened to rain one day and my brother said, you know, the only thing that's better than water is free water. So he took some buckets out into the yard to, to gather some water. And then Monday morning rolls along, and then his wife, my sister-in-law, calls the water company and tells them the story. You know, we just moved in. We'd like our water to be connected. And they paused for a minute, and then they said this to her. They said, well, your water had never been disconnected. Your, your water was connected all along. So the owner of the, of the house previously had just turned the water off in the basement. They had access to water all along, but they didn't know it. I, I share that story with you to remind you of what Jesus said. Jesus compared himself to a well that never runs dry. He, he compared himself to water. And he said, when, when you drink of me, you'll never be thirsty. I will satisfy you. I will fill your life and refresh you your life. So let me ask you this. Let, let me have you think about this. When we're connected to God's presence, we have access to joy. We have access to peace and strength. We have access to love. God's presence brings those things into our life. And we're not going to find those things anywhere else other than in God. So as we pray this morning, here it is. The creator of the universe the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the God of heaven wants to connect with you. And the only way that I can describe that is what's more amazing than that? Come on, church, let's be amazed today at the awesomeness of God. Let's be amazed at his presence. Let me pray for you. Father God, I thank you for your presence that's everywhere. And God, I just ask that you would right now fill your people once again with strength, with peace, with love, and with joy. God, help them to persevere. Whatever they're facing, let them know they're not facing it alone. You are with them. So God, just lift their spirits today. Just 
give them clarity of mind, clarity of thought. And God, just today, open their eyes, help them to see your faithfulness at work in their lives. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, thanks again for joining us today. Don't forget to check out nlccfamily.com for more resources and information for your family. I hope God was able to speak through you to today's message, and we'll be praying for you, and have a blessed week. We'll see you next week.